The gentleman from uh, Florida who is the chairman uh, of the Subcommittee on Agriculture, Energy and Trade, Mr. Cabello, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for scheduling this uh, important uh, hearing, and uh, I thank the witnesses for their insightful uh, testimony. Uh, I'm passionate about small business because I believe that small businesses uh, afford opportunities to those who need them the most, uh, oftentimes through casual encounters. Think about that young person who might have dropped out of college, their neighbor might be a small business owner, and uh, they might get a job that way. Think of a recently arrived immigrant who's looking for a way to get ahead. Uh, small businesses tend to hire those types of individuals. So I want to uh, ask a question on the uh, uh, EB-5 Regional uh, Center pilot program that uh, Congress established in 1992. Uh, I want to ask Mr. Burton specifically, uh, for, for those that aren't fully familiar with the program, under the EB-5 program, investors are required to put up uh, at least $1 million or $500,000 in high unemployment areas, and these are foreign investors. In return, they receive a two-year green card for themselves and their immediate family. If the project succeeds and at least 10 U.S. jobs are created, the investors gain permanent residency. If the project fails, they lose their uh, green cards and absorb the losses of that failure. Uh, this program is expected to sunset at the end of this year. Uh, Mr. Burton, do you have any thoughts on whether this program should be extended, or are there other programs like this that uh, Heritage may support for entrepreneurial immigrants? I personally think the, something along the lines of the EB-5 program, where you are basically allowing people who invest capital in the United States and create jobs in the United States to enter the United States lawfully makes a great deal of sense. Uh, I am confident the Heritage Foundation will uh, uh, probably reach that conclusion, but right now the institution is undergoing a review of, of immigration law and trying to develop a, a fairly comprehensive approach to it. Uh, but personally, I'm, I think that the EB-5 type approach, although there are little problems with it and I'm not an EB-5 guru, uh, it, it definitely makes sense. And I'm sure that uh, we'd be happy to work with you to develop uh, an approach. So. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Does anyone else on the panel have any thoughts uh, on it or insights onto this EB-5 program? If you don't, that's okay. Uh, I had another question, um, uh, Mr. Burton. I also reviewed uh, and listened to your testimony. Uh, I think one uh, uh, obstacle or barrier to small businesses is, uh, is uh, missing, and that's uh, transportation infrastructure. Uh, we all know uh, how fundamental it is to have a, a robust and modern uh, transportation infrastructure in our country uh, is for our economy. According to a recent report by uh, INRIX, in 2013, traffic congestion robbed the U.S. economy of $124 billion, according to this uh, group. Uh, without significant action to alleviate congestion, this cost is expected to increase 50 percent to $186 billion by 2030. Uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, our nation's transportation infrastructure uh, system, uh, its effects on small business, and uh, what we should do here in Congress to improve it, if anything at all? It, having a, an adequate uh, freight and, and passenger transportation system is important to all businesses, large and small. Uh, we tend to take those things for granted until they are not working right. Uh, the Heritage Foundation certainly sports having a robust transportation network, but in general, we would like to shift the responsibility for that towards the states, which are more familiar with their local traffic and transportation needs than, than the Federal Government. So. Thank you. Uh, any, yes, please, Mr. Clifton. On your commentary about the regulation that was done in 1992, one of the things that Gallup has been working on for some time now is studying what entrepreneurs look like. So when it comes to passing regulation that might force people who are not inherently entrepreneurs to therefore become entrepreneurs, might set them up for failure. And so we have been studying thousands of individuals and actually calling individuals like Ms. Kay herself, and we have found that they are very different than the general public. And so what we need to do is be much more intentional about who we are seeking out in terms of being entrepreneurs, because these rare individuals 
as I mentioned, from our data, from our research, look very different. So any regulation that might draw someone to be an entrepreneur who should not be one um, would not be wise. Thank you very much. And my time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.